James 5, 13. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. Many revere the prophet Elijah as the preeminently the elder of the prophets. He stands as one who has done some of the most awe-striking feats of faith in the scriptures. To pray like Elijah and to have results like Elijah is the crying need of the times. Edward M. Bounds, he is nicknamed the Praying Prophet, and James seems to find in this Ark Prophet the perfect example for the Christian discipline of prayer. When we look at the exploits Elijah performed through his prayers, we must truly seek to have this much confidence in God. Even the evangelist Luke testified. After the brook had dried up, Elijah, under divine direction, crossed over to Zarephath, or Zarephath of the Sidonites. There he was hospitably received by a poor widow whom the famine had reduced to her last meal. Her charity he rewarded by increasing her store of meal and oil. All the while the drought and famine prevailed. Luke 4, 26. In 1 Kings 17, 17 through 24, we read, Then he stretched himself out on the boy three times and cried to the Lord, O Lord my God! Let this boy's life return to him. The Lord heard Elijah's cry, and the boy's life returned to him, and he lived. These miracles alone are excellent testaments of the fervency of Elijah's faith. We should endeavor to have such faith in God to be as daring as the prophet. God's miraculous work in answer to Elijah's prayers also came when Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up, and struck the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed over on dry ground. 2 Kings 2.8 These may seem as if they are some sort of superhuman-like manifestations the kind of thing some would ascribe to demigods. But James reminded us Elijah was a human being even as we are. Too often in church when we hear, let us pray. It is ritualistic and doesn't evoke any consideration to engage the power of the omnipotent God. They are simply good Christian rhetoric. But let us consider that the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. We must not slight the effect that prayer can have on our situations. When we approach God to converse, we must always know that He is a willing Father who wants to move in His children's favor. When we pray, we are tapping into the supernatural and agreeing with the will and plan of God concerning us and the earth. There must be this conscious reality awoken within us that prayer becomes powerful when God's ears are tuned to them. And God is always leaning down to hear even the faintest whispers that resonate in the hearts of His beloved. As we pray, we must think of the imagery painted by these episodes in the life of the praying prophet. In 1 Kings 18 and 2 Kings 1, we have accounts of Elijah opening the heavens. 
He prayed and saw the heavens open in 1 Kings 18, 37 through 38. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. In other instances, Elijah was able to cause the rain to fall and in 2 Kings 1, he opened the heavens again and the fire of God fell on God's enemies. At the core of Elijah's prayers was the desire to see hearts turn to God. When God answers our prayers, these are great testimonies of God's power. The world will look on and see that the claims we make about our Heavenly Father are true. So let us not take slight, feeble, and flimsy prayers to God. He declares in the Word, Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. James 5.13 Everyone faces adversity, but the saints have the privilege to call on God in the midst of our adversities. When we are delivered, the world will see the measure of a king's loving kindness towards us. Are you in trouble? Are you perturbed, burdened, seeking beneath a load of bills, emotional turmoil, or any other form of trial? Is any among you afflicted by sickness, bereavement, disappointment, persecutions, loss of health, or property? The word used here refers to suffering evil of any kind. Barnes notes on the Bible. If you find yourself in this situation, then you must turn to prayer. We do not know any other recourse more fruitful than prayer. The most appropriate combat we can find is prayer. Hear the refrain from Montgomery's hymn. Prayer is the burden of a sigh, the falling of a tear the upward glancing of an eye when none but God is near. Sometimes we are so burdened that we cannot enter into the long and lengthy petitions, but as Augustine pointed out, arrows of the Lord's deliverance shot out with a sudden quickness. These are ever in the power of the beleaguered Christian, and more things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Saints, when we pray, we invite the power of God into our situations. It doesn't matter what we are going through and how dire they may seem, let us pray. It's not a religious retort that ends in the mouths of our preachers. It is as Paul declares us coming with weapons of righteousness in the right hand and in the left. James was convinced that God's power is to be found in the arena of prayer. He again asked another rhetorical question, is anyone among you sick? If there is such a one, James' advice is to let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. He is advising us to have the posture in our hearts that will bring the omnipotent God into our most dire situations. When we do, James assures us the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. Notwithstanding the sovereignty of God takes precedence, we must pray His will into our situations. So consider the truths we have gleaned from our discourse. God intends that we invite Him into our situations so that His power will work in our favor and others who have not yet tasted His goodness will see Him working for us. The exploits of Elijah don't rest in His power, but in the power of the God to whom He prayed. Elijah was a mere man, but he trusted in the almighty God. And when we do the same, our prayers yield power and become effective. So my friend, are you in trouble? Pray to God. Are you sick? Pray to God. 
He rescues the troubled and afflicted, and He heals the sick.